welcome back to my channel it's your girl Nat and I hope you are happy and healthy and you know having a wonderful day or week or whatever time of day it is when you're watching this I really hope everyone is okay and in today's video I'm coming to you with the tea all right Korea versus Japan all right, I got my notebook, I got my pen, you know, when I was in Korea, I was actually, you know, as we spent the days and so on, I actually wrote down a list of stuff, you know, the differences that my husband and I recognized while being there, and I said, you know what, this would be some good video content for you guys, so that you can, you know, uh, know the difference between the two countries being that it's two Asian countries I mean people often mistake China for Japan we know that and you know Korea is an Asian country and so on so we want to you know just discuss the differences a bit just to see uh, which country is like which country and which country is definitely like not like which country and so on all right so let's jump right in. As usual, just before we head into the video, we have our Natsnificent Fam shout out and here we go. Remember guys, if you want your name to be included in this bag, you have to be subscribed to my channel and you have to be leaving comments down in the comment section below. So let's chat, okay? I read all of them, I add your name to this bag and then in each new video, I do this and... Then I do this and I just pick one, pick one, pick one. All right, got a yellow one. And this shout out goes to Chantel Raymond. Big up yourself, Chantel. As I said, my family is small at this moment, so I actually personally know everybody that is commenting. Chantel, big up yourself. Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. And her comment was damn girl you get everything send me some tips if i leave ja again <laughs> and she left this comment on my uh video number six where i talked about how i get jamaican food in japan and of course if you have not seen how lucky i i am to actually be able to have jamaican food in japan please check this video right here so that you can see how I do it in Japan. All right, Chantel, big up yourself. Thanks for watching. And now, guys, back to the video. All right, guys. So the first difference between Korea and Japan is, well, it's not really a difference. This one is actually a similarity because it is actually the easy train system. And in Korea, the train system is just as easy or maybe even a little easier than Korea. First of all, they have subways, all right? So in Japan, we have local trains and we have bullet trains. I think there are bullet trains in South Korea. We did not encounter them. Uh, the most popular mode of transportation is the subway and buses. And I see a lot of taxis, but I heard they were expensive. We didn't take taxis when we went there. We rode the train like regular Koreans, all right? And it was very cheap. First of all, it's very cheap. Now, Japan can be a little expensive depending on where you're trying to go, but Korea, I found that it was reasonably cheap. And sometimes you were on the train for at least an hour before, you know, our stop. So yeah, easy train system, maybe easier or just as easy as Japan. All right, so the second... uh difference between korea and japan is that there are more kfcs as opposed as opposed to mcdonald's in korea now in japan there's a mcdonald's everywhere all right every single where there's a mcdonald's in every because i live in a rural area i live in the countryside the bush as we call it in jamaica and there is a mcdonald's here there are not many kc we have to travel to the city to get kc which is not so often because it's 30 minutes away and it costs us 2000 yen for a round trip and you know we can't do that so often so yeah 
in uh, Seoul, there were plenty of KFCs and I think for the entire five days that we were there, we only saw one McDonald's. And we were in the capital city, Seoul. And another thing I must note too, because we were in the capital city, I'm assuming that more amenities and so on would be in the capital, so uh, I'm not 100% sure if this is all throughout Korea, but based on what we saw while we were in Seoul, there are definitely more KFCs in uh, Korea than in Japan. All right, the third thing is there are more stairs than escalators in South Korea. All right, like everywhere you go is stairs. They don't use escalators. And, you know, it's strange because I'm coming from a country where... You know, escalators aren't a thing. Jamaica, we do steps. All right? We do steps and sidewalks. And so, but, you know, I've been living in Japan for almost two years. Two years. And this March will be two years. I'm currently filming this in February. So, I'm not sure at what point this video will go up. Just for reference. And I've gotten used to escalators being everywhere. In the malls, in the supermarkets. If it's big enough. You know, just everywhere. The train stations, if it's big enough. Just escalators to just help your walking um, a little. But in Korea, there are stairs everywhere. In the train station, a million stairs. I, I mean, we could count how many escalators we encountered during our five or four days and five nights there. It's it's ridiculously strange. It's strange. I'm saying the word strange because I'm not used to stairs no more, okay? Yes. All right, so the fourth thing that I have here is that PDA is a thing in Korea. Personal display of affection. The couples, they walk together. The couples, they are not afraid to kiss. They are not afraid to hug. I mean, they're all over each other in public. And it's such a difference from Japan because Japan is a very conservative country. Like, you don't see husband and wife or girlfriend and boyfriend, you know, he he ha ha in, in public. Unless your teenager i mean the teenagers do it all the time i guess because they can't do it at home you know you know how teenagers stay right so yeah i mean in the trains they'll be hugging and i'm like and I'm, i can lean on you because guess what i see people leaning on them and over here so why not you know so yeah pda is definitely a thing and also in lines if you're a couple and you're in a line say uh, for example, we were at Ensoul Tower and we were in the line to go to the observatory. Um, couples stand beside each other. So they're counted as one person in line. So a person in front of us, then me, Adam beside me, and then the other person. Instead of me, instead of one person in front, me, then Adam, then the other person, Adam, we are, we are just like this. Alright? So yeah, couples... Um, Stand together and PDA is normal. Number five is that winter dressing is less fashionable than in Japan. Alright, so in Korea, while we were there, it was winter time because it was Christmas 2019. And the people, it was cold. I mean, we heard that it would be colder than Japan, but to be honest, it wasn't. I think it was the same. But nonetheless, it was cold and... I see the people in thick jackets, long down to their ankles, very thick, very warm, and so on. In Japan, winter dressing is more on the fashionable side. So, I mean, there are some people that do wear the big um, winter jackets like I do. In a couple of my videos, you've seen me in a very big windbreaker kind of um coat people here do wear that because i mean it sells in the stores of course but most of the times girls are still in their short skirts and a little heat tech ah! i'm wearing a heat tech right now and it's similar to regular black stockings in jamaica just a little thicker to draw heat to your skin some are better than some but yeah i've seen girls females in just a little heat and same short skirt going about their business i'm like 
aren't you cold young lady like why and I mean other persons they have nicer more fashionable coats and so so I think that Koreans uh, dress better for the winter in terms of they choose being warm and cozy instead of being fashionable all right okay so moving along to the sixth thing and that is the Koreans wear gloves when eating finger food and unfortunately I don't have footage of this I thought I had footage of this but searching I didn't so I don't have anything to put on your screen but I guess me explaining could give you a visual finger finger food like KFC so I actually saw this when we went to KFC we went to Burger King I didn't see it happen in Burger King but maybe it was a slow night because not many people were in the shop so when we went to KFC there was um, right at the juice stand there was a big pile of gloves and I was wondering what are these gloves for and then other Koreans came into the into KFC and I saw them putting on the gloves and then they would use it to eat the chicken I guess to not mess up your fingers and have germs transferring from your finger to your food that is what they do and I, I actually think that that is an appropriate hygienic way of eating finger food because you know fingernail dirt I mean you can sanitize your hand all you want but what if dirt is stuck under your fingernails like that can get transferred to your food and that is nasty all right all right so yeah they do um use gloves to eat their finger food and another thing the kfc in korea is also different from the ones in japan japan i've never seen japanese um wearing gloves to eat the finger food maybe it happens i've never seen it and um, another thing in Japan when you order KFC you don't get a ticket with a number that you wait on like in Jamaica so in Jamaica you order you get your number you wait on your number to be called in Japan you go to the cashier you order you stay right at the cashier they prepare your um, order they bring it back to you then you pay all right so everything it takes roughly three minutes or five minutes if it's busy but you get your food right then and there there's no waiting in line and the drink too when you get everything in line the drink is also served with that so in Japan there's no going back to the drink machine to get more juice like in Jamaica we have unlimited KFC juice no and Korea is similar to Jamaica in that sense you do get a number and you have to wait on your number to be called to get served and they give you your cup and you go to the drink just like the, the drink bar just like Jamaica to get your drink and you can it's unlimited so you can refill all right moving along to number seven and that is streets are more dirty in japan streets are very clean and so on in korea it's a little different korea reminds me of jamaica the streets are dirty all right the streets are dirty and i think that is because they have a lot of street food and street vendors the korean culture that i've observed is similar to what jamaicans are used to you know the street side vendors clothes market food market all of that stuff is it happens in korea and so it generates a lot of trash and the roadsides will have big bundles of garbage and you know people will throw things at it's very different it's a very different asian country i can tell you that much so yeah it's a lot more dirty than japan for sure and it is very similar to jamaica in terms of litter number eight and that is there are hardly any bicycles and the main mode of transportation is subways and buses i've said that in number one so yeah um the harlem bicycle in japan bicycles are a thing you ride your bicycle students ride bicycles to school teachers ride bicycles to school if they live close enough to school where they can ride uh adam my husband he rides his bicycle to school because he lives like 
15 minute ride from his school I unfortunately don't ride because my schools are a little further so I take a bus and the bus is normally 20 minutes or so but we do ride to the grocery store and everywhere else that we need to go unless it's in the city where we have to take the train of course so yeah there are I didn't see any bicycles to be honest maybe one or two and yeah in Japan they even have motorbikes so not the bicycle that you pedal but motorbikes that actually drive in the in the car lane like regular cars so yeah that's one thing and these bicycle men KFC delivery people like delivery bikes and so like Pizza Hut KFC all that stuff those bikes they ride they drive on the sidewalk that was crazy to me because we were walking one night heading back to our hotel and we had to like scuffle out of the road because a bike a pizza delivery bike just hovered past us on the sidewalk and i'm like we're on the sidewalk are you crazy so yeah that is one difference moving on to number nine there are hardly any vending machines we all know that japan has many many vending machines different types different style different color and all that stuff there were hardly any vending machines i i only saw two vending machines and that was when we went to the aquarium there were vending machines inside and i think it's just because they they know that the aquarium tour takes long and you might get thirsty you know but otherwise from that i did not see any vending machines at all in japan vending machines are everywhere every single where all right moving along to number 10 and number 10 is that Korea is a Samsung phone type of country as opposed to Japan that is an iPhone country. Alright, so in Japan, it's iPhone all the way. It's, it's hard. I have a Samsung, my husband has a Samsung and if that phone should ever get into any problems, I, I, I doubt that we would be able to fix it from here because it's iPhone all over but in korea we actually did not see any iphone stores but there were plenty samsung stores plenty plenty and when you walk into like supermarkets that sell as accessories for phones like earphones chargers and so on it was mostly labeled um samsung okay number 11 and that is English speaking is very very popular there and I am saying this and while saying this I'm just thinking I'm wondering if it's because we were in the capital city that's Seoul I mean it's a tourist country and many people travel to South Korea and they would actually go to Seoul so I'm just wondering if it's because the people there know that you know tourists and people from all over the world come that they are more versed in English I am not sure if it would be the same thing if we were actually in a more rural part of Korea uh, likewise in Japan I don't encounter much English speakers but I'm still wondering if that's because we are not in Tokyo or in a bigger city you understand so they speak English we actually did not have to take out our translator at any point during our trip to have conversation with anybody we 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 spoke english all the way even in the pharmacy i went to buy a throat spray because if you watch the korea vlog video and i'll link that too um i lost my voice so i needed throat spray and the cashier spoke english so even a man on the street he was so helpful he came and he was like can i help you that night we were looking for kfc that it was right outside our hotels but we didn't see it so yeah uh they speak english very much more their english ability is way above japanese english ability like it's amazing at number 12 the korean currency is very weak so for example 1000 jamaican dollar is equal to 10000 korean won all right and normally we say the yen that is the japanese money and the jamaican money is similar me and my husband like to put that the same because it's just like it's just a little 
over. So you can understand the confusion when I walk into the pharmacy, need a throat spray, a simple throat spray for my sore throat and this cashier is going to tell me 8,001. I was like to Adam, um, we don't got money to be buying no throat spray for $8,000. But then he reminded me that, guess what? 8,001 is actually just 800 yen, so we actually can afford it. So it's very confusing. And if it was so confusing for me, I can just imagine persons in the US because 1,000 yen is actually 10 US dollar. So if if 1,000 yen is 10,001, it means that 10,001 is 10 US dollar. So just imagine a, a US um, citizen going into there and they have to be paying 80,000 dollar for something. You know, it, it, it's going to throw them off because that would be only 80 dollars in the US as opposed to 80,000 dollar in Korea. It's, it's just crazy. The currency is crazy. All right. Moving on to number 13, and that is vehicles are not quiet, and the Korean people ain't afraid to cuss you out. You understand me? The vehicles, though, in Japan, listen, Japan is just a whole other country on a whole. Like, when you're on the road, because I take the bus to school, so I can, I'm on the road, so I see how the vehicles operate. They don't beat their horns. All right, I, I've been in the bus and um, we're at an intersection where the bus is supposed to turn but other traffic is coming down and somebody might give you a blight so you can turn in. They don't blow, they don't flash the indicator light or anything like that. They're like, like how him even see you a bow from in the bus? Like, I cannot understand. So the Japanese, they're very subtle with their driving. If somebody is bad driving them or something like that, you will not hear them talk about it. They just wait in their humble little selves. And if somebody give them a blur or anything, they're like, thank you. This is their thank you. And the hand is like, thanks. You know, in Korea, you hear the cars beeping. And that's why I say Korea reminds me of Jamaica so, so, so much. You know, you hear the car. We were in our hotel room and we heard mad beeping on the road. Mad beeping. Like, what could be happening? You know, and we look. It was just, you know, somebody bad driving somebody and all of that stuff. And, I mean, it was, it was, it was very surprising to me that they actually, um, beat the horns and you know just be loud with vehicle in general and while we were on our way to our hotel we were on the airport bus and an old lady and her husband was on the bus too and the man the husband was sleeping and they got to their stop and the lady got up the lady got up and you know naturally you think your husband would be behind you or so and coming out and when she got outside she realized that the husband was still sleeping in the bus she came back in there and she i don't know i know my know i mean the whole korean language thing and she was cussing you understand but it seems as if he always does it and so she was very frustrated and you know she just let her tongue cut loose on that man poor man so yeah they're more um expressive with driving and in talking and interacting the next one number 15 is there is no bowing in korea so very often when my husband and i were walking us or talking to people saying thanks and and so on um he would bow like so in Japan, they bow a lot. Everybody knows that. So you're like, Arigato gozaimasu, onagaishima. Just think, you always bow whenever you're talking to somebody. And yeah, in Korea, they don't do that. Like, when Adam did it, I got the impression from the person that he did it to. He was like, all Asian countries are not the same. Why the hell are you bowing to me? You know, I got that impression from the person's face. So bowing is not a thing in Korea. If you go to Korea, um, don't bow. Especially for foreigners in Japan that have gotten used to bowing and all the things. They don't do that. So that is actually the last comparison that i have for you guys i hope that this video gave you some insight if you are looking to visit korea soon 
or you know know somebody who is actually going to Korea and you can share this information with them again these are just things that I have noticed compared to Japan I am not speaking on behalf of all foreigners in Japan I could never dare do that but based on what me and my husband have experienced so far this is the comparison that I have come up with and so yeah please like this video if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe click the notification bell right beside your subscribe button to get notified when I post a video if that is what you want I thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye so back to what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs>